Well, for a nation that prides itself on its farming now and productivity, it's pretty astounding that the listed agribusiness sector is a wasteland. Just to name a few recent calamities, Elders, New Farm, various wine and timber outfits and AWB. So across a wide range of agricultural endeavours, the corporates have found extraordinary and varied ways to destroy wealth. So will the news that two of the biggest players, Grain Corp and AWB, plan to merge be a game changer in the bush or is the deal an act of desperation with worrying implications for competition in grain handling? Neil Woolrich reports. Local wheat growers are enjoying some of the best conditions in years. Timely winter rains have helped establish lush crops across southeastern Australia. At the same time, Russia is suffering its worst drought on record, forcing it to halt grain exports until the end of the year and putting a rocket under wheat prices. That's a free market in action. So someone offered me 237 for it yesterday and we just sold it for 254 today. That's a far cry from the market price of around $190 a ton when Chris Kellogg harvested his crop back in December. And there must be some horrible shorts out there. See what all the no one expected the price to rise. <laughs> While Australian wheat farmers see the rare double of strong prices and a promising season ahead, the local industry is preparing for yet more upheaval. This week, two of Australia's biggest agribusinesses, AWB and Grain Corp, announce plans to merge. I just think it's part of the rationalisation happening in the industry that's been happening for a long time. I, just, I think it's just a progression of that. Um, whether it's a good progression, I think time will tell. I think it's a merger between two companies that have been struggling. The union would create a company worth $2 billion and the biggest rural services business in Australia. It would operate along all stages of the wheat production chain, from fertilisers to storage, freight, marketing and milling. We're competing in a really international environment now and this will create a much larger, stronger organisation that can compete on the international stage much better than we can today. Grain Corp was still very vulnerable to uh, the size of the crop in eastern Australia and the level of exports, so their um, bottom line goes up and down depending on the size of the crop. I mean, it, it still will. And then we've got the, uh, the same situation with, with AWB. They probably needed access to infrastructure and, be, and uh, to be able to streamline their, uh, their side of the operation. Grains industry analyst Malcolm Bartholomew says AWB was an odd fit in the deregulated Australian wheat market, with a national presence but no dominant position in any one regional market. And that really did put them in direct competition with the big internationals. They're on the same same footing as the big internationals, with uh, with nowhere near the same resources as some of those big international companies uh, uh, companies would have. Malcolm Bartholomew says a combined AWB and Grain Corp should be able to compete both here and abroad. But wheat growers like Chris Kellock argue the proposed union could stifle competition. Together, AWB and Grain Corp would own all of Australia's eastern seaboard grain terminals, except for a half share of the Melbourne port facility. That facility in Melbourne is very much sought after by exporters to export their grain. It is providing competition in the southern area and Melbourne is a preferred um, exit point for a lot, of, a lot of grain as it stands and I believe that's because of the competition that exists now. They may be able to exercise mon monopolistic powers and therefore reduce the competition and reduce the ability of growers to achieve the best price. There are some concerns in terms of freight from uh, st up country storage down to port uh, in terms of access to port facilities and those sorts of things are the areas that we're really quite concerned about. There are actually quite a lot of alternatives for, for growers these days. There's a lot of other merchant storage capacity out there. There's also quite a lot of on-farm storage and that's been a real feature um, over the last sort of uh, few years as the domestic market has grown. There's more on-farm storage available. 
Alison Watkins took the reins at Graincorp just last week and will remain as chief executive of the combined group if the merger goes ahead. The companies are promising $40 million a year in cost savings, largely through cutting back head office functions. Alison Watkins says the prospect of creating a national champion in agriculture is exciting. We should have a strong agribusiness in Australia and at the moment we don't really. If you look at the mining industry, we have some really strong, global, very competitive mining businesses, but we don't have that in agriculture. And we are very strong in agriculture. We are very competitive and I think it's a really exciting rationale for the deal, but it's not the driving rationale. However, the merger announcement overshadowed AWB's second profit downgrade for the year, another sign of the difficulty that Australian agricultural businesses are having in competing on the world stage. I think growers would be fairly dismayed at AWB's fall from grace. I think it's fallen off its corporate perch for many reasons, not only the oil for food scandal. So really this merger is about survival for AWB rather than um, any merger because these companies have been successful. Australia's wheat industry is now being run by a new generation of farmers, those who've well and truly left behind the days of AWB's export monopoly. That's giving rise to a more nimble and competitive industry. But those farmers want as much choice as possible in who they sell their wheat to and fear that a merger between AWB and Graincorp could limit their options. I think the best thing growers can hope for is we have Australian or overseas companies with very large global footprints exporting and marketing our grain overseas. And I'm not sure, so sure that this merged entity we're talking about Grain Corp and AWB give us that global footprint. It's now up to AWB shareholders to decide whether the merger goes ahead. In the meantime, farmers will be watching the skies, hoping that decent spring rain will deliver a big harvest and let local growers capitalise on soaring wheat prices. You can never say that it's in the bag until it's in the bag. I think it's true, though, to say that the season's off to a good start, particularly southern Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria. So, so that's, we, we, we had a good autumn break and um, we'll hope that the good conditions continue through to harvest. Generally, there are a lot more buyers. Growers are getting some very good, attractive options to sell their grain. The container industry has continued to grow. Um, there's new markets emerging for Australian wheat. But rationalisation of Australia's more open wheat market still has some way to run. Foreign predators continue to circle and the remaining smaller players may quickly find they need to consider mergers as well if they're to compete with their much bigger overseas rivals. Mm -hmm.